Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to wrap up the Adeptus Sororitas or Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol project that we've been working on over the last few weeks. Now I've already done a prep video, uh, we've picked the scheme, how we developed the scheme, and we've looked at quite an in-depth video of how we'd approach painting the vehicle in the kit, which was the Rhino. And I thought there'd be quite a bit more to cover, to be honest with you. Uh, I thought there'd be maybe at least two more videos in this series, but as it was as I was going through it, it turns out once you've nailed those two, there's not really much different else left to do on the models. So I thought I'd go through all the little sort of extra bits and bobs that you're going to come up against in the box itself and how we can make them fit in with the rest of what we've done. And also a pretty huge revelation for me when it comes to painting Sisters of Battle, but I'll talk more about that at the end. So let's paint. So one of the most obvious different things we're going to come up against is things like the Arcoflagellants and the Sisters Repentia, where we've got skin to paint rather than armour. Now, I've done lots of videos on skin, but one of the things we haven't necessarily looked at is how we do this weird, sort of almost dead skin that the uh, the Arcoflagellants have got when you look at them in the artwork and whatnot. So what I wanted to do was using a black undercoat, I'm airbrushing Night Questor flesh over the top of it, and that's deliberately to sort of desaturate that Night Questor flesh a little bit, so wash it out a little. Now I've had to thin it quite heavily, just normal airbrush thinner, and I'm firing this through at about 25 psi in a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle Harder and Steenbeck Infinity, it's one of our signature series ones. And for the first highlight, just a nice simple zenith also from above, and we're going to catch those surfaces that are facing up and leave those ones in shadow, just that pure Night Questor. I've made a 50-50 mix of Night Questor and Rakar Flesh. Now again, Rakar Flesh is this lovely sort of quite cold, grim kind of skin colour. So we're already introducing a nice little bit of uh, tonal variety uh, on that skin. And to finish it off, we're going to do a smaller highlight exactly the same way. So picking that angle and just hitting it from above, this time just using pure Rakarth flesh. So these are really sort of unhealthy skin tones that we want to do. For the Repentia, we can just use less unhealthy skin tones, as it were. So if you go back and have a look at any of the skin painting videos we do, just follow the step, three paints, layer it up like this, and you'll be fine. Now to add more of a uh, unpleasant, almost necrotic feel to some of the flesh, I'm using that Dreadful Visage uh, contrast paint that we used uh, recently when we were doing the Saurus. Again, just to introduce more blue, more purple uh, into this skin. And it's those blues and those purples which are across the whole um, range of models that I've painted in this box. So there's a nice little bit of uh, harmony with that. But they, when you put them on skin, they just make it look really unhealthy. And now I'm going to use uh, another contrast paint. This is Magos Purple. Um, it's not really very purple at all, uh, but it's lovely for doing things like scars. But because it's a contrast paint, you've got to make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, otherwise it's going to wash all over the place. So put it on my brush, touch off the excess, and then just go over the scars. And that's all I'm going to do to the skin. And you can see it there. Once you put it up against something black, it really does sort of show up a bit. Now, metal. Uh, all the all the repentia slash penitent parts of the the army um, and obviously in this box we get the penitent engine it's a great opportunity for us to get some different looking metals uh, into the army so this is stuff that isn't going to be that well maintained this isn't part of the sisters armory um, for this I've used uh, exhaust manifold which is a, a paint by metal color series and the reason I've chosen it is it's a darkish silver but it's got loads of brown in it so if you haven't got it just mix some brown into your darkest silver and brush it on but I absolutely love brushing metal color series paint um, it flows really, really well. Though I do find you have to do two or three coats of it to get a smooth finish. And then over the top of it, we're making up an oil wash with sepia. And we've used that, if you remember, on all the other models anyway. But I've also got a little bit of orange on my um, little palette there, uh, another brown and a grey. Now those are uh, dark rust, um, burnt umber and uh, starship filth by Abtalung 502. But it really doesn't matter, it's just those colours that we want. And they're just to represent different levels of corrosion that we're going to put on the armour. So we wash that brown all over, and then we just start dotting in other areas of this colour and blending it in with our mineral spirits. Just want to say massive thank you to all of you that are supporting us here, but particularly those of you supporting us over on Patreon. Um, it's awesome. You're letting me and Andy do all sorts of cool projects and we're absolutely loving it. So you get your stuff on here each week, your stuff on Patreon each week, and we're able to start expanding other areas, things like culture paint as well, um, to do more exciting things for you all. And we wouldn't be able to do it without your support. So thank you 
ever so much all of you um, that do that but you know like subscribe and thumbs up and all that on here do make a massive difference too so a couple of heavy oil washes on the metal just get tons of color into that metal it's what we want to do now speaking of color on the sister superior here we've got a chainsaw and i really love hazard stripes um, i think they're a very 40k thing um, I, you know i love the sort of nonsense of having them on weapons you know of course they're dangerous um, and this is one way we can go about painting them um, if the piece you want to paint them on is relatively easy to access but is attached to the model itself all i'm going to do is use a piece of cling film to mask off the rest of the model. So this will work for all sorts of different things um, when you're painting and masking, but it seemed a really obvious little tip um, to throw in here when it came to the chainsaw. As I say, there's lots of different ways of approaching hazard stripes. Personally, I find generally the most efficient way is doing the yellow first and then painting the black stripes in. So all we've done is done a nice white base coat and then I'm airbrushing on uh, Bad Moon's yellow contrast paint, just a nice bright yellow. The contrast paint yellows are fabulous. Um, they're well worth having. They're all quite different. Um, those in the reds, I think, are probably my my favourite ones. Oh, there we are. Someone's uh, someone's coming in just to check uh, check we're going all right. God, he's buzzing over pretty low, isn't he? Um, and once that's uh, on, we're going to just shade that a little bit with another contrast paint. This is Gore Grunter. It's not essential, but I always like to put a little bit of uh, color into the shadow rather than it just being a uh, sort of murky black shadow on my yellow um, but it's, it's just a nice way of getting a little bit of extra color in so we black out all the details and then it's just a case of nice and carefully I'm trying to go in the same direction as the teeth on the chainsaw so I'm using that as a guide uh, and then essentially using the width of the brush to determine the width of the stripes um, and if you do mess up ever so slightly you can just start doing chips like I'm doing here to sell those um sell those stripes a bit more now you may notice the cling films back on because i absolutely definitely didn't absolutely mess up the last one and uh, have to redo the yellow uh, so yeah just leave the cling film on until you're absolutely happy with it um, but i find it's really really important with hazard stripes that you do this little bit of chipping i know we haven't done loads of chipping across the rest of the models but they are quite grimy and grungy um, and i think this chipping just breaks up those edges and i think it really helps sell uh, the effect on hazard stripes now you're going to come across quite a lot of candles and, and braziers and things uh, with the sisters miniatures and there are tons of different ways of painting fire and smoke and all the rest of it but this for me is a really really simple way and again we're army painting so let's use those materials and those techniques that we know just work um, are they a bit gimmicky maybe but they look cool and they're simple to do it's really just coloring in here okay so again over white we're washing Bad Moon Jello contrast paint all over. Then I've taken an orange contrast paint. This is Magma Droth Flame, I think it's called. Um, I've helpfully not put the name on the bottom of the screen there. Um, and we, you know, we're covering, I don't know, two thirds of it with the orange and we're just leaving the yellow uh, in the recesses where it's gonna be or nearest the core where it's gonna be the hottest. Um, and because it's a contrast paint, it blends very, very nicely, very, very simply. And then we're going to take a red contrast paint. So this is Flesh Terror's red and repeat the process, but a much, much smaller area. So towards the tips of the flames, we'll do uh, that darker red color. Um, you don't have to use contrast paints by any means, but for me, this is just, just one of the things that I find them super useful for. And as I said, with army painting, I want go-to recipes. I want things that I know work. I want products I can get hold of easily if I run out. That's how I'm getting it done. And then once that's all dry, I'm just gonna give it a little dry brush uh, with Vallejo model color black. And that's just cause that's quite a matte black. And this is just to represent a little bit of smoke um, at the end of those flames. Um, and it's really, you know, very, very simple. And once you've painted in the, the metal of the brazier around it and framed it, um, as is so often the case when we're painting these models, as soon as you get other colors next to them and you start framing the different areas, the impact is, is much, much greater. Um, I think it looks a lot, lot cooler. Parchment or um, purity season things. You're going to come across these a lot on the sisters miniatures and they're super, super cool. Now I've chosen to do the parchment in this sort of blue white color. So this is pale blue by Vallejo. But the reason I've chosen that is because my armor is sort of that nice bone ivory tan deck tan color, which I would normally do parchment with. So if your scheme is different and you just want the parchment, just use that deck tan color. Um, to do this with but say the reason i've chosen to do it the blue is so it, it works well against that armor and this is the key one really for me with the period seals is getting the text right and 
it's another contrast paint. Now I used to use black uh, and drying retarder here to do it, um, but the new black contrast paint, Black Legion, I think because it's got that contrast medium in, just extends that work time a little bit more. And it's really just, it's like a more controllable ink. Um, and as long as you've got a nice sharp tip on your brush, um, you can do that. Even under these filming lights where it was drying out a lot quicker, I was able to do most of a strip without having to go back to the palette, which is so, so useful. Um, biggest tip here really is try and keep your brush right up on its point. Uh, don't let the angle drop because then you're going to push the brush and you're going to get more of the bristles hit it and you'll get those wider smudges of paint, which we don't want. And then lastly, I'm going to give it a nice, simple, dirty wash. So this is a gray color here. This is Starship Filth. Again, if I was using a tan color for my parchment, then I would use something like a burnt umber or, or sepia that we've used already. And I want to do quite a thick wash, you see here on the side, um, and just to, just to get some grime and dirt uh, into it so it matches the rest. Just like a traditional acrylic wash, really, but I prefer the effect you get um, and the finish that you get from a, an oil wash. Um, so just get it how you like it. If you don't like it, just wick it off. You see, it's really easy to do. Um, not varnishing before any of these oils. You don't need to. The paint's perfectly safe um, as long as the acrylic paint is dry underneath. Um, and that's it for the parchment. And then lastly is the bases. Now, I was going to try out these sort of super smooth bases that we're seeing a lot with Kill Team. I really, really like them. But I want to play with this Combat Patrol and I want it to kind of work on most gaming surfaces as in you know, gaming tables, styles of tables. And I love a bit of sort of just generic, urban, sort of detritus type battlefield. Um, and there's a, a really great product, this this AK Dry Earth stuff. It's texture paint. You'll have seen it, all sorts of brands do it. Um, but I particularly like this one because it, it gives you that almost that look like you've done the sort of different levels of sand on the base. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's easy to just splodge on like this. It also acts like an adhesive as well. So if you wanted to put little bits of rubble in there as well at this time, you could do that without having to use the glue. Now I thin it quite a lot with water just so I get a really, really sort of, um, quite a fine grit, I guess. It's not too splodgy. Uh, and then just clean up the edges like that. It doesn't take long to dry, maybe half an hour. And once it is, I'm just washing it with that gray wash again, that Starship Filth we saw a minute ago. And I love this combo of colors when I'm doing urban stuff, that the, the gray and then the much, much lighter sort of tan colors. I think it gives a really lovely natural um, kind of base for us to work from. Uh, on our bases um, and also there's a thing people will say off oh, it's light models use dark bases or dark models light base blah blah I don't think that's necessarily true and for me generally a lighter base I think shows up better on the table um, so even though these colors aren't a million miles away from my armor color I'm not worried about that um, I don't think it's going to clash if anything I think it's going to complement it so I'm using a couple of powders a gray one a brown one uh, and then this light sienna color uh, and I'm just mixing them uh, together on the surface of the base uh, and then I'm going to smush them together with my brush really work it and push it into the base um, touch off the excess that's going to be absolutely fine for me I'm not going to use pigment fix or I'm going to use alcohol or anything like that you absolutely can if you want to it's, it's, it's they work they're great but if you work your pigments in I, I haven't necessarily found it's a problem I use magnets to transport my miniatures not foam cases um, so there's very rarely any sort of stuff knocking the um knocking the pigments off um so it doesn't bother me but as I say if you need to just pop a little bit of um alcohol on there to help it fix uh, or go and buy pigment fixer if you really want to um, and that works fine but i love that sort of really lovely natural tones that we get there on the base so yeah that was um those are the sort of extra bits that i came up against when i was painting the rest of the box everything else we've covered as i say in those previous videos and i've got to say i i love how they've come out um, I really do. Um, you know, you can see that once you've got that main scheme down, you're going to be able to do the characters and the slightly different models like the Seraphim. No problem at all, because you already know how you're going to paint the different parts. And there may be one or two little extras. Oh, I've got to paint some skin on the face, or I've got to paint a little power effect on the whip or whatever. But, you know, that's once every 20 models or something like that. So, um, as it was, you know, there weren't very many barriers to getting the rest of this box painted, which is great. And in my opinion, is essential when we're trying to army paint. You know, we, if I wanted to paint uh, or have a Sisters of Battle army that was painted really, really well, um, I could do that. But it would probably take me a year, maybe. Um, and actually, that's something I'm considering. Um, I've, I've really sort of fallen in love with these models. I've been listening to audiobooks and reading the books while I've been doing this project. And um, yeah. Um, I, well, 
Put it this way, it'll take a long time to do it. But the way we've done it in this video, particularly when we pop it on the table, they look great. Even at a foot, they look great. It's always difficult doing army painting and showing it blown up on a screen like this, sort of hyper close up, because that's not designed what they're designed to be looked at or how they're designed to be viewed. Um, but on the table, they just look fab. You can pick out all the different parts uh, on there. Um, and I hope you can see from these videos, there's, there's not really been any particularly high level techniques or anything. We've just chosen a few things. We've been careful with what we do. We've executed them well. Um, we just sort of coloured in properly, I guess. Um, you know, stay tried to stay within the lines, um, and I think we've ended up with a, a really wonderful um, result. Um, as I was saying, um, you know, I'm considering doing a show-off army, as it were, of sisters, or possibly more of a Inquisition slash Ecclesiarchy type project. Um, I've been looking for something to do with that, and I'm quite tempted. So, you know, we're talking a year, eighteen months sort of project to work on. So, I will keep you updated with that if it if it comes to anything but the big the biggest revelation for me really with these sisters was I was always hugely intimidated by doing um, a sisters of battle army I've wanted to for years but I just didn't think you could do it well without spending forever on it um, and that just made me discount them but because you guys have been supporting this combat patrol idea uh, and we're going to keep going I think maybe nids for the next one I think would be obvious right and I really fancy painting something griblies um but yeah, this, this combat patrol thing has made me have a go. And for the rewards versus the effort and the time that's put in, I think they look fab. Um, and I can't wait to learn the new edition using this combat patrol. I've already ordered um, the the Repentia and the um, Arco Flagellants boxes to, to make up those units to full size. Um, and Andy sent me a box of Seraphim that he had lying around. So I'm going to get two squads out of that without any duplicates. Um, so yeah, safe to say I'm, I'm rather keen. So I will keep you updated with um, with the additions to the army as well. Hopefully you'll see those in some pictures from us uh, playing some games. So yeah, that's, um, that's the end of the Sisters Combat Patrol series. So if you've got any questions about anything that I have done, please pop them down in the comments. Uh, I will do my very best to get back to you. Uh, if you've got any Combat Patrols or Vanguards for AOS that you particularly like to see soon let me know in the comments and i'll let you know uh what the next few are probably going to be so thanks ever so much for watching click like click subscribe if you're not already and i'll see you next time if you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe ben can sort you out